Welcome back to the Ultimate Pool Pro Series. Stephen Jamieson here with you for the final game of the day. And what a great opening day it's been in this Pro Series. And delighted to say for our for our final game, we brought out our headline commentator, Brian Buzzer-Halcro is with us. Thank you for having us. Oh, it's our pleasure, mate. And we, at long last, get to see a man who sat in that chair today. Chris Melling is, is in action. Final game of the day in the first round of the Pro Series and that hammer break that is has been his signature for such a long time in action once again. And it's what helps him become one of the best around because when you've got to break that effective, it doesn't give you more chances than most, doesn't it? Break's the biggest part of the game. You pot a ball regularly off the break, you've got a chance to win every tournament. If you can't pot balls off the break, you've got no hope. You cannot win a tournament without making balls off the break. We so often see it, don't we? There's a, there's a glimpse of Emma there we saw her earlier. She was in the studio with Craig Lakin. I was just hoping to be able to get the chance to show us what she can do. It's There's no easy draws in a 32-player pro series as talented as this. That There just isn't. There's, there's simply no other option than good no. at minimum players no easy games at all Gone but this is probably games. just about the hardest draw <laughs> just about <laughs> this is a tough one obviously chris starts at favorite but he's had not a nice break there from the off he has got a lot of tied up yellows so i'm not surprised to see him miss from um, so early in the game there he's really tried to fizz that yellow into the middle pocket play it dead weight it probably drops but not at that pace and well, this is what Emma spoke about. This is a, a chance, really, to try and set the tone and settle the nerves. Yeah, well, Emma's a great woman player and she's got a chance to put Chris under a bit of bother here, but it's not the... Oh! oh. Start. These tables are so slidey and skinny and fast. Well, you, you were out there earlier, weren't you, against Dave McNamara, and we, we heard there from from Leiden de Bono, we were speaking with Greg in the studio, and it was a bit of a theme in the match that we just watched between Gio and Leiden, where... If you're not quite used to this table and you're a bit nervy, especially in those opening frames, it's it can really, really catch you out. It's it's the perfect table to play on when you're when you're flying and everything's easy because you, you can rely on your touch and your skill. But when you're a little bit nervous, you want to be able to sort of play the ball through and cue through it. Right. It's um, it's lightning and quick, and if you haven't had any TV time, you're walking on the ground that you've never been on before. You're learning by overhitting and underhitting, basically. Uh, and what I found in my game earlier was to get top spin on this table is so difficult. I've just been having a chat with Mick about getting top spin on the ball, and it's it's so hard. The harder you hit it, the less you get. But uh, Chris is looking like he's going to take a quick lead. He's, he's one of the greatest ever, isn't he? Oh, he certainly is. One of the headline names of this Ultimate Pool Pro Series. Great to have him in action himself and the machine bookending the day. He had a little bit of a wobble on the eight ball there. It threatened to spit back out, but Chris Melling does go one in front. And uh, Framer, she spoke about wanting to be able to take the chances. The one thing there is it was a was Chris Melling's break. He, ex he's, he expects the dish, but that one shot where she went in off that told her an awful lot about this table didn't Straight it away it's got her because what seems to happen is when you're hitting balls off angles you, you judge in your mind what line it's going to come off on contact but these seem to come off much wider so everything's different and if you as i say have got no television experience of that table first second third time on it you're really going to struggle so oh. the big guns like some mick and chris had lots of tv time over the years they just go on and they like to duck the water. Well, Emma had experience on this table. She was in the Masters in, in week 10 of the competition, I think. But you know from playing in that competition yourself that it's not quite the same table since it's been reclothed and it's it's now, I mean, it's reclothed for this competition. It's pristine. It is it is razor sharp, it's isn't like it? It's glass. <laughs> Even when you lag off for your break, you just touch that weight and it goes up and it goes down and you think, is that ever going to stop? So he's, not got another, he's got not another easy clearance again. He's got a lot of work to do here. 
Maybe maybe Chris might play a style where he might hire deliberate missing and let Emma go, you know. That's a great little tactic if we can use it, putting a deliberate missing. I bet there's not many people do that. It's just not in Melling's makeup, I don't think. I think he's he's a player who trusts his ability more than just about anyone else on the planet. And we, we heard from Scott Gillespie earlier with Simon talk about when he actually sees a tough finish. He almost sees it as a challenge and it, it keeps him coming back for more. I, I think Melling's from that sort of school. I think he's going to go off the red here and play it in the middle and that'll, that'll free that yellow up. But he's still got one at the top left that needs freed as well. Um, he'll find a way. This is what great players do. They map their route and they follow it. And nine times out of ten, they'll go down that route that they've mapped. Talk to me a little bit about your game earlier on against Dave McNamara. Obviously, 5-1 up and then that swing moment with, with the eight ball. We've not actually had a chance to get your thoughts on it since we spoke to Dave after the match. But I know that's the bit that you're looking back on with a little bit of regret. What are your yeah. thoughts on it? Just think, like, I'm a really long-term being around forever player and I've got a lot of experience. And I always look for an attack and shot that will come in with a bit of safety too. So when I've got that black and I'm so close to the yellow that's by it, I'm thinking, stun it in, and if you miss, you've got you've left nothing, instead of just potting the black. So I've been my own worst enemy. I've been trying to be experienced as done as in. <laughs> yeah. But the pool guards then punished us. Dave got a lift from it. And then he started off badly. I started off well. It, it almost seemed it, it was like an it was like it an was X, like wasn't it, on the grass? Exactly yeah. Right. Like for him to nip in front were 11 seconds on the clock. I needed seven reds from the break and be on the black, which is not going to happen. You know what I mean? No, so that isn't. was so important that frame. But I really feel like I beat myself. But fair play to Dave. He stuck in. He never gave up. He took his chances, and I wish him well in the next round. Well, speaking of beating himself, take a look at what Chris Manning's left himself here. He's run grounds. What can the magician conjure up by way of response? Turns the table over. So this is where Emma has to punish Chris. It comes with its own kind of pressure, that doesn't it? Because yeah. when you are the big underdog, you you always go into the match saying, you know, I need to clear up every single chance I get because I know I might not get many. That brings its own kind of pressure in a strange yeah. way, doesn't it? Yeah. I think. Going on the TV, right, can be very daunting if you've never done it before. And um, what you have to do is you have to map your roots out. You have to map your roots and follow them. And uh, if you can do that, the game is easy. It's when you start losing the white and your roots are no longer the roots that you've planned. And you've got to rejig and you've got to recomputerize. And that's what a good pool player does. If he falls out of position, he reprograms, he'll find another way, and he'll go down the second route. If he falls out of position again, he'll reprogram again. And that's what the great players do. But the great, great players, they never seem to fall out of position. You know what I mean? And I think that's the experience on the TV. So from me to take a negative from a, po a positive from a negative in my match, I've learned a bit on the TV today. So the next time I come on, I've got a little bit more experience behind us. But yeah. Emma, Emma's a great, great woman player. And uh, she's doing this, an ambassador for women's pool, isn't she? Absolutely. But I was speaking to, to her yesterday, and I think it's a big moment for, for Emma because she's not playing on a, on a women's tour. Mm. She's, she's, in with, she's in with the big boys, you know, and she's there on merit. She's a phenomenal player in her own right four-time women's world champion four-time world master done the lot been there done it got so many different t-shirts but i think speaking to her yesterday she wanted to be able to have that chance to to take that game to the next level and and, and you know this as well from from your years in the sport where you do only get better sometimes by just playing the best players you you have to take some knocks and some beatings but it makes you a better player this can only be positive for emma she's playing against the best players of the world She's up against the men's category. She's not in the women's category now. She's up against the men. Just an so open all draw, she's yeah. going to do is get better and better and better. And uh, she's a really nice girl as well, Emma. She's really friendly. She's really chatty. And uh, I've got a lot of time for her, me. And I'll, this is a key shot. Play I'll, it well. And this is what I like to see. Emma knocking the balls in. And 
Sean, what you can do. And you know this better than anyone, that first frame that you can get, the difference that it makes to your mindset on the on the big stage. It's, well, I kind of talk much about getting the first frame because to see today against Dave, that's the first time I've ever led on TV. <laughs> I've been 2-0, 3-0 down every single match. So there, when I'm, I'm winning... So you're saying you got to win a nosebleed. I, I, I was in new ground, <laughs> because every single opponent's played so well from the off, yeah. you know? Um, so I'm trying to manage the clock. Dave's kicked into gear when I've missed the black, and he's got a second wind. I've kind of run out of steam a bit. The balls aren't lying nicely for us when I'm getting a chance to bridge, bridge the gap. And he pipped us on the post, didn't he? But... Just got to take it on the chin and no, there's get, always pro events here. Hey. Yeah, I've always got another one. I've got Carl Morris tomorrow, who's an old day. Um, me and him have done some battling over the years. We absolutely do. And we've got similar games, me and Carl. It should be a cracker. We are going to take a very, very quick break. Emma Cunningham ties things up against the magician Chris Melling. Ultimate Pool Pro Series on your Friday evening here on Free Sports. Two racks in, and Emma Cunningham is level pegging with Chris Melling. And that is going to come up dry. And make absolutely no mistake here, inside this arena, which has been pretty raucous today at times with, with everyone in, it's been brilliant to see and indeed here. Make absolutely no mistake, Emma will be the big crowd favourite in this yeah. one, I think it's safe to say. The underdog's always favourite, especially her being the lady player. She's got all the crowd behind her. Chris will be under a little bit of pressure in his own yeah, little way, because um, he knows he has to win this game. Yeah, there's, 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 there's no, there's no win situation, isn't it? He's big odds on favourite. And... Uh, and Emma always travels well, travels with friends and she's really got a huge following, hasn't she? She's got like a uh, well look, there you go. <laughs> the picture tells the story. Yeah, quite a few are packed in and there's a lot of uh, a lot of players and there's a lot of supporters who've come over actually. I've had a lot of Irish accents inside the venue today. 
The it? Irish are absolutely mad for it. <laughs> there's so many, so many great players as well. They're, they're a really good uh, country for the pool. But once again, Chris hasn't got an easy, uh, an easy finish again. He ain't got drop-ins here. Yeah, he's Michael got Bill work. keeping he's... an eye on him, look. Yeah, Mick. He, he was giving him a bit of stick earlier after he got his early win. And all the way through the day, Chris has been expected to, to join his pals in the second round. It's not always a given, though. Nothing guaranteed. But Chris has got one ball I think he needs to fix here, and it's the one on the bottom left. Um, he's going to go from that... Uh, no matter where they lie. Yeah, that'll do. He's fell out of position slightly. He might chop this one up the rail now that he's on it, because he's such a good potter. And these bags are quite forgiving. Or pockets, do I call them? Yeah. Pockets. Mikhail doesn't like bags. He says pockets dry. <laughs> he says, don't call a dish, call it a clearance. Yep, he's, he's got loads of quirky little rules, Mick Hill, from speaking to him today. Hates doubles as well, I can tell you. Well, he's a great doubler as well. Funny yeah, he enough, is. But to say he, that. He, he always says, if you, if you can play it down the rail, play it down the rail. Never play the double. Man of, man of pure intentions only. Yeah, he's a class act. There you go, there's the hard one out of the way, smash the double in. Now um, the one next to the black is probably the only one that can cause him a problem now. Great shot. Pockets on this opening day are playing a touch kinder than they may do. As the competition goes on, that was a bit of a topic of discussion a little bit earlier. Beautiful. Oh, I wasn't. You see there what he's trying to do there? He's trying to pinch that pocket, you know. He hasn't actually missed that ball there. He knows the pockets are a bit forgiving, so he's trying to pinch it. Watch, he's trying to pinch an angle, yeah. See yeah, that? he was. He's, what, he wasn't. He hasn't actually missed that tried shot. Tried to play you know. first, no, yeah. No, no, he's trying to use the size of the pocket to give himself an angle that wasn't there. Now, in America, you'll get away with that all day. But on these uh, pockets, it's slightly trickier. So Emma's got to punish him again, yeah. One of those that looks like a really bad miss, but actually the, the angle he's trying to find is very, very difficult. If he's just trying to pot that ball, he pots that ball. Uh, yeah, 10,000 oh, times out of 10,000. He doesn't miss that, Chris. He does miss. He's only human. But he doesn't <laughs> miss much. Yeah, he's, he's not missing that one. But yeah, the, the way that he was trying to pinch it made it more difficult, made it missable. See, see if Emma can be a bit savvy here, right? I mean, she's going to go for them because she's, she's got no other option, but there was a shot on here where if she could have doubled that yellow, that two tied together, cross table, and put the red in and leave the white on the side of there, Chris is dead. And I think this is how Emma's got to play this match to win this match. See, attacking them like that when they're not really on, she's going to have to be a little bit more savvy. So you were thinking in that instance to play the, to, uh, well, the, see, the bottom yellow. Yeah, you double it across, you put the white here, Chris is red there, he's dead, you know what I mean? And that's the little tactical shots where people might not quite understand, but they have the powerful shots in the game. It's seeing them. It's seeing them shots. Chris Manning goes 2-1 up. Made Cut. that one look assured in the end, but it's not been without its scares so far for Chris. Emma's had a chance every frame. Hasn't she? And she'll be happy with that. She's not getting blasted off the table. She's she not won't be happy with not getting more than two frames, though. She will be. She will know she could have had more than one. She's, she's in the game. That's all she can ask for. She's not getting parked in her seat. Because uh, there's nothing worse than being a pool player and just sitting in that chair. Honestly, it's so depressing. Because <laughs> <laughs> I know I've warmed some seats in my time, I have. <laughs> We've asked this to pretty much just about everyone today, Brian, but I wanted to, to ask yourself as well. This this Ultimate Pool Pro Series, it feels like a bit of a, a bit of a new dawn, a bit of an advent. Yeah. 
is that how it feels for you as well with with, with what's going on behind the scenes and obviously in, in front of everyone's eyes here today? Well, the, my spin on it, it would be I feel like I'm back home, right? Because the players in that room is what part of my upbringer. And I've played all the disciplines and rules over the years, but this today is the greatest specialist event I've played in. And I, everybody's buzzing in that room next door. Everybody's knows. It's a real atmosphere, isn't it? Yes. And you've got the crowd in now making a noise. This can only grow. It's up to us to make it happen. You've got a great production team. We've got great organisers. You've got great players. Great prize money. It's up. I pray, so much this like that. Is, I pray so much this is the break that pool's needed because I've watched over the years and it's never been like this. Well, Emma's made a really good break there, but this is... She's got a chance here. Yeah. Um, no hard balls, everything goes. Just good positional play required. Eight ball could be a bit of a problem, though. Oh, she's took right, sorry. Um, She's well, absolutely taking reds, yeah. You see, if the black's tight, you can use the red next to the middle to kick it out. Or if she can get the right white on the right-hand side of the table, she can use the red at the top to kick it out also. So she's got two opportunities. So I think if I was Emma, I'd put the red over the bag here, come to the right-hand side of the table, put the red in the right-hand corner and go into it while you've got one over the middle. How's our angle? It looks awfully straight on that. So she's going wrong, to have to do it with actually. the last ball, isn't she? But when you're out there, you know, the shots you just don't see. You don't see them. It's when you watch your back, then you see them. You think, yeah, I've played the wrong shot there. <laughs> yeah, you can see where she's just trying to line it up. She's got to pick she, the angle. She's got to have a high angle. It's no good being straight in here. She's got to be able to come off the left-hand cushion and flick it out. So there's a high angle. But she needs a little bit of run here. It's the key shot to unlocking this fourth frame. Oh, oh spits it out. Yeah. Maybe Emma was looking at playing that black into the cushion off the yellow I and not shifting it. She's had another plan there, she has. Because the way she's played that, she's gone nowhere near the shift, so I think she might have been playing into the cushion off the ball there. Must have been the decision, yeah. And that in itself created its own difficulty because getting across the table on that ball was difficult. Yeah. And the pace that she played that with, oh, sorry, making the, with Chris, sorry, in the first frame. And these middle pockets need to treat them with a little bit of of respect, a little bit of care. It's a beautiful table. There's nothing like a... Uh, it's nothing like you play on any local club, that's for sure. I don't know, I've heard Buzzers has a great reputation. Yes. <laughs> for one of the finest clubs in the northeast. This should be a fairly simple run out in the end for Chris here. Yeah. To make it. He ain't making no mistakes from here. I know you've been able to, to watch a lot of the action today, Brian, apart from obviously the, the game Brian. that you had with, with Deej earlier, but the, from what you've managed to see on, the, on both the stream tables and on just being around the venue, is there any players that have really caught your eye on this opening day? Um, well, I, there's, a, there's only a few players I don't actually know anything about. Um, it's the two Maltese boys. I don't know anything about them too, so I'm clueless when it comes to them. But you see the rest of the players. The field is a minefield. You've got Mick, Chris, Phil, Carl Morris, Declan Brennan, Aaron Davies. You now, can name whoever you want, yeah, really. It's, now, it's... anybody could win this tournament, but you're going to have to break well, play well, and get a bit of run. Yeah, and, it, and anybody in this 32-man field can win this. Well, you take a look at some of the players just lurking in the back there. I can see Sean Chipperfield who got a win over Greg Batten. Yeah. Craig Lakin had a great win over Carl Sutton on the main table yeah. a little so, bit earlier. So it goes to show you, even when you're looking at the games on paper, who you might think might win, Frank it's shown you in the results. There's people are getting turned over that you think's going to win. Yeah, I'll we'll just very but, quickly run you through the results that we've seen today. You can bring you up to date with one that just... Uh, came in relatively recently. That was the penultimate game of the 
uh, of the first rounds here in Pro Series 1. And that was Declan Brennan getting a 7-2 win over the safe cracker Shane Thompson. Really impressive win that for Declan. Well backed as ever in this tournament. And a great win as well for John Rowe, who got a 7-6 nail-biter over Jordan Church go his way. The man who has enjoyed today the most, I dare say, is Stevie Dempsey, the man who got himself a bye into round two. Neil Raybone not with us this weekend, sadly. Look forward to welcoming Neil in weekend two. But that meant that one lucky man got a, got a free seat into round two, and that was Stevie Dempsey who we'll see tomorrow. Straight in the money. <laughs> Happy days. It's, it's the easiest cash he's ever going to make, that, isn't not it? Not make it easier than that. Dare say he was near a drink. But you see, when you talked earlier about the players, um, you've got a lot of young players in this tournament. Declan's young, Aaron's young, young Gio's young. Like, so you, you take it, you know, Josh, Aaron. Yeah, these are the next 10 years players. Me, Mick, Chris, we'll probably be gone by then. These will be going to be the, the stars of the future. So, I know I'm getting on a bit. I've been trying to help the young'uns. I say, if you need any advice, just ask us. I'll give you it. And the beautiful thing for you is, as well, is I, I've seen you chatting to, to some of the senior lads as well. You still feel you're always learning every single day in this fall, don't you? Oh, I've learned to do. <laughs> I've, I've learned a valuable lesson to do. I, uh, I'll never, ever try and stay safe on a block ever again. <laughs> ever again. <laughs> the best lessons are the toughest. You've sometimes. got to learn by your mistakes, don't you? It's just like life in general. You learn by your mistakes. It's the same playing pool. And being able to identify when you've made their mistakes as well, that's like, um, Chris is going to run these out again here. Yeah. yeah, just did a little bit of pocket pinching again there, just to spin the cue ball out to take this red into the left centre. He's going to drop this one, drop the next one. He's going to be automatically on the red. It's just the black. I um, That'll go in the middle, so this is 4-1 for me. I've got a mouth-watering draw shaping up, by the way. How about Mick Hill versus Sean Storry? You've got a 7-6 win over Phil Harrison. That could go either way. How about Stevie Dempsey taking on Dom Cooney? You got a good win earlier. Could go either way. Dave McNamara, Rob Chilton. Once again, could go either <laughs> way. Uh, Dayan Gregg is uh, waiting the winner of this one. So that's uh, that could be a great match. He played really well earlier, didn't he? Yeah, it looked impressive. Craig Lakin versus Sean Chipperfield could be over in five minutes. Now then, Chris Melling. I'm really surprised at that. Chris Melling. That is a huge surprise. Now you see what he's doing here, though? He's doing something called a parallel shift, right? Now, a lot of English players don't know about this. It's an American thing. It's how you find the angle and you move parallel. So you draw laser lines on the table that only you can see. Now, Chris has got it mastered. There you go, look. Ooh, he was close. He'll hit them every time, oh, you know. He, so if he's, you ever he's see, a it's, the, it's why they call him the magician. Yeah, it's, because it's, you know if you ever see Chris standing well, with his cue out. So where's he gone wrong here, Brian? Because he's, he's lashed into the black. He doesn't know where it's going. Maybe he should have dragged our own with a bit right hand side, played the black in the middle. You know what I mean? Guaranteed yourself a shot. Because when you're crashing into balls like that, you don't know where they're going to go. And what was his result there? He snuck at himself. And these are a great chance here for, for Emma to try and take them down. I think Emma will take these out all day. Craig just got to watch and uh, Chris rather just got to watch and take his medicine. Yeah, she needs this for him, Emma. This will settle her again. Well, we saw Chris in action in the Masters in the in the last 16, and he wasn't anywhere near his best. He's been playing a lot of different codes recently, not has anywhere near as much time on the eight ball table as he would have liked, but it's so, not quite the vintage that, we, that we've been so expecting to see. How many people, when they watch that, are in a state of shock that they're seeing Chris miss balls? Because oh, they're, that used, they're that used to seeing him not miss. When he does miss, they're in shock. Well, that's it, isn't it? It's not a bad miss, Arrow, because I don't think she's left a, a decent shot on the black. She should still have took that out, but yeah, it's, it's not the end of the world. It's a full ball snooker, but if there's any right. man in the world who you'd back to make this... Watch. 
He's going to find an angle and he's going to look like Harry Potter, right? But he ain't just doing anything. He's parallel shifting. He learned that in America. I was there in America with him. I learned it too. Them Americans have got so many secrets, right? They keep them to themselves Boy, and they don't, like they don't uh, uh, enclose them. You've got to like learn the hard way. But Chris being a, an American nine ball player, he's picked all that up over there. And it's such a handy tool to have. Oh. So Emma has a tough shot here. Cue this straight. Just cue it straight. Talk about the sort of the shots that you don't want to play on this table when you're a bit shy of confidence. This is the sort of one you do want to play. Just barrel gun this. Lovely. Yeah, that'll do. Beautiful. Ah, oh, cue that an absolute dream. Listen to our support. She has great This little edge, Chris, is, you know. Yeah, it, it's, it can't be nice. Because he's a long way off where he wants to be, and despite being 3-1 up, soon to be 3-2. It's a game, isn't it? He knows he's got a game on tonight. Emma Cunningham goes back within one, <laughs> and her supporters <laughs> are getting right <laughs> behind her. Me and Brian enjoying this one immensely. Sure you are at home, too. Do stay with us. This one continues when we come back. Welcome back, Ultimate Pool Pro Series. On your Friday night, Emma Cunningham with the break. One frame behind Chris Melling. This is in the balance with plenty of time left. You couldn't get better Friday night entertainment, could you? Oh, I couldn't agree more. Emma's going to come up dry, though, and this is going to hand the table back to Chris, who, as we mentioned just before the break, is, is not at his vintage best here. But what good players do, what great players do, which Chris Melling undoubtedly is, is they tend to have a very, very annoying habit for everyone else of finding a way to win. He's got a couple of tricky ones here. I think he's going to go reds, but uh, he's got two there on the bottom right that he's got to take care of. So I think he might go into them here and try and develop something. Oh. Watch That's the cue ball here. Watch how much left-hand side he's playing this with. 
Yeah. It's a it's a good job he hasn't made it because he's played it so well. He could have stopped the one in the top and then the one in the middle and then that clearance becomes easy. So it looked difficult, but it wasn't the way he was seeing it. Red balls in play. Scott Price, the referee, having a difficult time making his voice heard, I think, over this din. It's a rowdy crowd. She can nail this red in the top yard. Yeah. Yeah, that'll do it. See, our little confidence is rising, isn't it? This is as confident as, as I've seen Emma play on a main table. It's, it's great to see. Because anyone who, who's seen Emma play at her very best knows how good she is. But it, it's a little bit of a mental block, I think, oh. at times. And, and the extra added pressure that she puts on herself, but also feels that comes from others as well. This is as confident as I've, se as I've seen her, which is, can only be a good thing. I if she's she taking on the plant this here. plant in the corner. Yeah, you'll do. Gone. You will she do. She's gaining confidence, I'm telling you. Come on, take your time. I'd love to see this go close, just for entertainment value. Oh, it's all right. You don't you don't have to pretend otherwise. Yeah, I think you're I, uh, I, I, not I, the same script, I, aren't you? I, 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 said, I said earlier on air when uh, Scott Gillespie was on the hill with two to spare against Jake McCartney, oh, I'd love to see Jake win the next two to make it close. Patched up with Goobsy after, don't worry. Right, one good positional shot. I think she's going to play this next red in the bottom left. Just float up the right-hand side of the table. She's just got to judge the pace. Oh, she'll take that, she'll take that. Just wonder if it was going to... Just result in a horrible halfway house. See, yeah, she's just going to have to float this in the top left and just give herself a long black. Don't do nothing with the white, just let it do its own thing. Don't try and be clever, you know what I mean? Just make the pot, give yourself a shot. Yeah, you learned that lesson earlier. Yeah. The hard way. Shot. Well, she took no notice of me, just give herself a pot. <laughs> give herself a pot. <laughs> Come on, Emma. Well, she's made some, she's made some great pots in this visit alone. This long eight ball for three apiece. Fantastic! Yeah, always the white. She's that fine. That is awesome. Great, great counter clearance from Emma Cunningham. We're all square. Brilliant. We are all square. I tell you what, I, I don't care how experienced Chris Melling is. He's there'll, going be to a, be there'll, be a, there'll be a little bit of he ain't got that negative crowd. feeling right now. He knows that whole room wants him to lose. <laughs> it's not nice that, you know, when everybody wants you to lose. I can't imagine that's ever been inflicted on you before. Oh, I've been there, mate. <laughs> I, I know that feeling. We've all gone through it at some point. Do you know when you used to go on the tours years ago, you say, like, Mick Hill, six apiece, and he's playing an underdog, and the underdog's got him beat? The underdog will make a mistake, and the whole room would want Mick out. The whole room would want him out. And then he'd go on to win the event, he should go out, should be out. Chris with the next break. All square. The Q power he gets is remarkable, isn't Chris it? Chris was telling me yesterday that he had 25 breaks. He made 24 off 25, and he made two balls every break. It's, it's, one a, drive. it's a frightening thing, isn't it? It's horrible. <laughs> it's, but it's just, I mean, you could, there's no exact science with the break. I know you've had an on-off relationship with I've yours down the years. I've been searching for that for 40 years. Yeah, yeah, so still haven't found the, it. There's no exact science around it, but there, Chris Melling and probably Tom Cousins as well, two, two players who you'd probably say are as close to a guarantee, the closest you can get. And the way they do things is just remarkable. Well, in the game, I think Tom's got the biggest break, Tom. But uh, Declan Brennan's got a great break. Yeah, he was uh, a bit underrated Carl there, not he? Morris has got a great break. He doesn't hit them hard, but he's regular as anything. Oh, 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 where's this going? Oh, no. Oh. I tell you, he's struggling here, yeah, mate. He's struggling. 
Chris that has is, a little look to the heavens. That is so not him. Look how much space he's got to play in there. For him to overhit that, he's, he's feeling it, man. Eh? He's going to be careful of the push shot here. Yeah, if anyone can play a Massey shot, then it'd be Chris Melling. <laughs> oh, that's unlucky. It's the only way he could play that shot without fouling. Now, look at this. Emma has got a chance to go ahead. Did you think you would have been seeing this at 3-1? Because I did absolutely didn't. honest with you, Brian. I absolutely did not. Me neither. And Emma Cunningham growing in confidence by grow. the minute. Yeah, she's going to grow and grow. And the more she gets on the board and the closer she gets to seven, that's putting Chris under more and more pressure. We talked about it at the start of the match, didn't we, that Chris is almost in a no-win situation here. In, in the way that he's expected to win this handily, if he wins it handily, well, you're expected to do that. Every other result is a slight negative for him, and this is, this is not easy for him to deal with. Yeah, because he's got the whole room against him. And, and he himself got, isn't playing well, and he knows that more than anyone else. This is not the Chris Manning we're used to seeing. See, the great players will they find something from. I don't know where they find it, but they find it. Yeah, if only us mere mortals so knew where they got find the it. Uh, Emma's got the momentum at the minute, but it could sharp change in a heartbeat. There's a little bit in between there. In off in both pockets. Yeah, a bit of horrible on this. He's in off in both pockets. He's going to have to put a bit of spin on this, I think. Going to the right centre. That'll do it. She's yeah, fine. She's got it. Emma Cunningham, after seven frames, leads Chris Melling. This is awesome, isn't it? This is awesome. Don't you dare go anywhere. This match continues when we come back. Do not adjust your set. She knocks a break in dish in here. <laughs> Welcome back to the Ultimate Pool Pro Series. Myself, Stephen Jameson, 
And cool. the one and only buzzer, Brian Halcrow, with you on this Friday night on Free Sports. Ooh, Emma Cunningham. Look at them reds. Emma Cunningham leads the magician, Chris Melling, by four frames to three, race to seven. This would be an enormous upset in the first round of the Pro Series. Emma Cunningham is edging closer and is growing and growing in confidence. And that Doesn't is a dangerous she look prospect. focused? Yeah. Doesn't she look focused? Look at her face. And she's got a great chance here. Absolutely great chance. Yeah, these reds are about as good as they come. Pick your route, follow it. Right to the corner. This is the game shot, I think. She knocks this in. Yeah, the rest should be almost stop shots, really, yeah. if she can nail this one to the top right. And she's potted great up there now, hasn't she? I'll do. Oh, and it goes. She's opened the pocket. That little flick with the yellow has made it even easier. She's queuing a dream at the moment, is Emma? She's just her little tails up. This is going 5-3, this, man. It's hard to see otherwise at this stage. It really is. Got three drop-ins. The Wookiee, laser-focused. As good as we've seen her on the main event table. For a two-frame cushion. Brilliant. Never a doubt. They can't knock it. You can't knock it. Oh, we could be on for a massive upset in the final game of round one in the Pro Series. Chris knows he's in the game. Well, I'll be totally honest with you. I do not envy being in Chris Melling's shoes right now. It'd be a very difficult place to be. Emma's going to be so pleased with the way she's played, honestly. She started off a little touchy, a little edgy, but over the last two, three frames, she's been brilliant. Chris, and Chris knows he's in a game, doesn't he? Oh, I think he knew that a long time ago. He remains he, stoic in his chair. And he's 1 to 20 against 29. with the bookies. Right. Some bets go down with this one if this one stays the same. <laughs> Chris Melling needs something here. Oh, great break. <sighs> it's the old faithful, isn't it? It really is. It's an extraordinary weapon. He's got to take these out. And I don't think he's got an easy opening red, and he wants reds. Yeah, he absolutely wants reds. No doubt about that. But okay. opening reds are a few and far between. I think the one just, just below the balk line probably cuts in, I, I don't, think. I don't think he's got a shot. I yellows don't. aren't terrible. It's just he wants reds because he knows if he messes up on yellows, them reds are... Tr <laughs> they're going to get cleared up. Yellows it is. He's got no option. Yellows aren't bad, though. The one on the left side rail is obviously his hardest ball. But actually, it's all surrounding the eight ball. If if he says his pattern right. The yellow next to the middle is going to link him to the two at the bottom. So it's this is where he's got to do his work at the top end of the table here. This is where it gets pinpoint accuracy needed. He's got to float this in, come between the cap with the red and yellow, get on this one with the right angle to get on this one. It's not easy, this. He's got to be pinpoint. It's the one thing that's deserted him has been his cue ball control. It can desert him at times, Chris Manning. It's his I part of the reason why he's earned that nickname, the magician. I think he's done himself in. But this is, it's going against him again. He's going to have to slightly swerve around that red. I'm not sure even if he's, he's definitely not got a full pocket at the top right. Now you see what he's going to do here, Steve. He's going to try and go off the cushion, off the ball and slide it in the top right hand pocket. He's going to go, so I call these slider shots. Oh, and it doesn't drop. This is incredible. One good shot from Emma here. And she's going to be on the hill. I can't quite believe what I'm watching. Just goes to show you, doesn't it? Doesn't matter how good you are. The balls and you miss, you can be beaten.
See, the closer Emma gets to six, she'll start to feel a bit of pressure as well, you know. You'd think so. Yeah. So far, Seven, she's sorry. felt nothing. Seven, sorry. I thought we were playing race to six here for a minute. <laughs> Not get too ahead Seven of ourselves, loss. yeah. This could be such a big frame. This the key opening shot. Oh, oh, oh where's the cue ball no, not in? Oh, that's so it's unlucky. In. She couldn't do that again if she tried. That is so unlucky. Look at the needle she's threaded here. It's so unlucky. It's a turning point, that, Steve. Could well be. It's a dry smile from Emma Cunningham. She knows it's a turning point. And you look back at matches and you look and see He's where was the turning again, point. It's Chris. And He's beating himself a little bit here, is Chris. Yes. This should be a really routine one. run out from here. Where's that cue ball? Ooh, he's all right. His heart would have been in his mouth there, you know. Yeah. Now, we Chris five, is just four. praying for a dry break now. Yeah, we didn't think we'd be in that position. Uh -uh. It's 5-4 to Emma Cunningham. Two away from home against the Magician. Don't you dare go anywhere. Hold on to your hats. Emma Cunningham, five. Chris Merling, four. Emma Cunningham with the break. Ball here. And it is... She's got one. Game got two. very much on. It's an awkward lie, though. This bottom right of the table is messy. It's a good break, but she's not really been rewarded with a great split. Nah, both suits are nasty, like... If she's going to go aggressive, I think she should smash the double yellow in, go into them on the side rail, and it'll open the whole table. Smash the double in. There you go. Yeah, you called it, Buzz. She's not had the greatest of results, like. What you got? Uh, Slim pickings here, isn't it? She can play either this yellow on the rail at the top left, or she can be really 
push the boat out and try and cut this yellow under the red in the bottom left hand bag. Or she might play the yellow off the yellow in the corner. I think that's what she was just lining up, she yeah. She's got many options. A little billiard shot perhaps coming up here. Didn't execute. If that goes over there, she'll be pretty happy with that. It's not the worst that's, result. That stopped three Chris's red. She'll be over the moon with that. that is not the worst result at all. And in, in a strange way, in a really strange way, the way that Chris is playing at the moment, he's not having a good time out there. He's struggling a bit with his own game. Getting him to come to a table on a tricky lie like this is, could, is not a bad bad thing. It's good for Emma. You can see in Chris's body language, he's not happy. He's not got that little bounce in his step, has he? That you normally see him have. You've got to give Emma uh, Cunningham so much credit for this. You yeah, really do. Because Chris braves the men players. You know what I mean? And he finds himself behind here to a female player. There's plenty of people, myself included, who have known for a long time that Emma Cunningham has the ability to cut it. Yeah. It was almost as if she needed to believe that herself, or maybe be given the opportunity to believe that herself. Tonight she has. She's been brilliant. Win, lose, win or lose in this game, she can hold her head so high. And it'll give her confidence for the rest of the series. Chris is going to have to play safe here. Now, little flick off the yellow, back in behind it, because Chris has got to hit a cushion. She can fudge him right up here. Fudge means snooker for any of those that don't know what a fudge is. <laughs> this is the replay of. Yes, yeah, she's there. got a chance to put him in a lovely snooker here. Just flick off it very gentle into the side cushion and lie back. I know she's going game, mate. Go on, Emma. It's the one theme of Emma Cunningham's play so far. It's been hyper aggressive. Well, she's had a free go. That, that's why she's played that. But you see, me personally, I would have tried to keep Chris down. You know, when you've got a man down, I've always said you keep him down. Uh, obviously, in Emma's case, you kind of keep a man down wherever. <laughs> you keep a woman down. <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> but she's not it's, left him anything. So yeah, nothing's on. Just wonder what he's got cooking here. He's going to play the deliberate, I think. Not the deliberate, the um, tactical foul. He did. Not potted it. I think the red does now go, though. Let's have another watch of this. The thing is, has, has he left anything? I think he might have done. Uh, I think he's getting away with that one. Oh no, he can. She can see the yellow. He actually's got a chance here, uh, Steve. This is a good chance. That red just makes things a bit mixy. This is now difficult. This is not easy. I think she needs to take her foot off the gas here, like chip that yellow off the side rail, take the white up the board. Don't leave Chris nothing. Don't just hand him, hand him the table, you know what I mean? That's the one, Emma. She's thinking, she really is thinking. Oh, she's gone for the double. <laughs> is this going to travel across? It would have done. It would have done. But nevertheless, Chris Manning to the table. He's got the red to the bottom yeah, right. He's going to pot that, and he's going to hit the gap with the black, the yellow, and he's going to free the red here. He's got the perfect angle to do it. Yep, he's going to hit that gap and develop them. A natural angle, so he doesn't have to do anything with a cue ball. And he's... He's not had the greatest of results there, like. He's going to have to smash another double in. It's been a peculiar sort of match, this, from Chris Melling. Oh, he's going for the cut in the middle. Makes that cut in the middle. A little turning point. Just needs to avoid the minefields. Does so well. Chris Manning should be able to tie things up from here. My goodness me, hasn't he had to graft? He has. He hasn't missed these, though. We are all square. Nah, he don't miss them. All square, all to play for. Five each. Yeah, Emma had a little chance there, you know. She needed to take her foot off the gas there.
I heard Mick made a great statement earlier. Mick, uh, probably the greatest player that's ever lived, said that even he won't go for clearances at 30, 40 percent. He won't even do that. So that's coming from his mouth. You know what I mean? He's a wise old chap. He ain't gonna. He is. He's, he knows he, a thing he or two. He knows. He's been around for that long, and he's a really nice guy as well. He's not. He's not got any like look at me type thing about him. You know what I mean? Yeah, extraordinarily he's, generous with his considering knowledge Considering well. he's in his own little category. Yeah. <laughs> There's nobody got six. Frame 11. Now then, Chris Melling Five all. would love a ball. He'll get one. And would love a lead back. It's very rare he comes up dry. One, two. He just is the best in the business of that, isn't he? What's the split like? It's probably a 50-50 clearance, this one. I think you could take a that suit if that yellow passes the red in the top right. And it does. Yeah, I think he's going to go yellows. You know, pick them off. Yellow ball can play. Will help ease out the eight ball as well. Going yellows. Yeah, I think he's going to take this one, next one, left hand corner. I kind of see him. I getting a shot this for him. Said that before though in this match. I just think Chris is now like knows he can't be messing around and Emma's playing well. He obviously doesn't want to go out the event early doors. He's not got it easy in pro event two, by the way. Oh, he's got a right tough game, hasn't he? Look, he he's has. done it again. He's made another error. That's um, not like him. I think he has a route out. I think this cuts just. Yeah. But it's not where he wanted to be. Oh, well, you can say that again. And he's OK. Yeah, he'd be happy with that. It's a great shot, isn't it? Such you must take those for granted. Such a That's good such potter. A good he's, shot. he's a brilliant potter. It is a strange one because because he is Chris Melling. You hold into that higher standard. That was a, such a, an amazing pot the guy by any standard. Uh, he's a great potter. He's multi-discipline isn't he? he chops and changes where most would hinder it very rarely hinders him the only time i think i've seen it hinder him was a couple of mondays ago when he struggled so much chris melling leads again six five he's on the hill is he about to survive an almighty scare emma cunningham has the next break and will need a ball Oh, it's not been an easy night's work. He knew it wouldn't be. No. But I don't think he anticipated him being quite this difficult. Don't think he saw this coming. And I think, it, it, you know, Chris is an honest, honest enough player to purely think about his own game. He won't be thinking particularly about his, his opponent, I don't think, or, or maybe even the match in general. I think what will concern him is his own personal errors in, in open table because he's, he's made a, a lot hasn't... of mistakes tonight that you don't often see him make. It hasn't really been his missing of pots, it's been his cue ball. Would love a ball. Needs a ball. Hasn't got one. And now Chris Manning can go and win the match. I think he's going to go... I think he's going to go yellows here. He's got a choice, they're both good. Yeah, there's no real... It's just a black. No real bad choice just here. Just a black, I think that's the only problem. And I think that will make him lean towards reds. If he, if he takes reds, he doesn't have to do anything with the black. If he takes yellows, he's got to do something with the black. Yeah, hence the choice, I think. Red balls in play. Chris Melling fighting for his place in the second round. The winner of this 
will play Dan Grek, who looked excellent, the Maltese, earlier on today. Super win over Dylan Leary. Great draw in prospects. Chris is going to try and kill this off now. Yeah. You don't want this going to six apiece. He's and he's done ideal. it again. And you can see the scratch. That he almost can't believe what he's doing. Because that table's so quick. It's like glass. And you would have to play on it to realise how quick it is. Nails the double. He just wants a little low angle when he plays this in. He'll probably play it with a bit of left-hand side because he wants to be not straight next shot. He wants to be like on the top cushion with a white. That's perfect. He just pot this float over naturally. Don't want me straight over. Wants a little angle again so he can float back over for the black. So anything but straight here, Steve. Not expecting any errors from here, but... He wanted he's, an he's angle, not, but not that high. Yeah, now he's, he's got to go twice across the table now. Yeah, he's not ideal on this. This could go wrong. Is he going to go twice or dead weight? Dead weight. Just drops. Yeah, well played. And Chris Melling. It's going to be one relieved man. Survives. That was a great match, wasn't it? An almighty scare. Well played, Emma Cunningham. Great effort from her. As good as we've seen her on a main event table. And that will give her loads of confidence as she heads into the second pro event and the rest of the pro series here All for right. Ultimate Pool. Emma Cunningham has got Josh Kane in pro event two. Chris Melling will move on to play Dan Grek tomorrow in round two. He's got away with one.